All right, we got the conference recording on. Thank you and welcome to Apportion Ministries Lunchtime Family and Friends Prayer Call. Today is Wednesday, May the 3rd, 2017. Prophetess Paulette Denise here. Our word of exhortation is coming out of Psalm 25. Psalm 25 is titled A Prayer for Guidance and Protection. And so as I was seeking the Lord with what the exhortation should be today, I know I have several prayer requests. Let me just lift up the things on this prayer request, I'm going to lift up the list first, then we're going to do the exhortation and I'll just flow right into prayer because it just all flows together. We're lifting up Joanne and Rakia specifically, um, also Erica, but Joanne and, and Rakia, we're lifting them up for favor in transition. We're lifting them up for um, seeking employment, that God has a place that he wants their anointing to reside or that he wants them to pick up more tools for their journey. So we're lifting that up, that they would have favor with living um, situations and that they would also have um, knowledge and wisdom from God and favor with God and man to catch up on their bills. And so if you hear yourself in there, you put yourself right there. That's why we're reading through Psalm 25. That's also why I put Erica in there. Also, we're lifting up Joanne, her clients, the clients that she takes care of in particular we're lifting up bud and we thank you god that you're in the midst of that that you draw back the forces of darkness as i was just listening to miles monroe saying that that darkness is a place of void and, and the lack of purpose the absence of purpose and so we thank you god that the, your plans and purposes be fulfilled in bud's life and you have joanne there for such a time as this a vessel that is empowered with the word of god that she can decree and declare things in the atmosphere and take authority over whatever demonic forces and forces of darkness that are trying to make this man's ladder be yucky instead of his ladder be greater. We stand on your word, God, where you promise long life and you promise that the ladder will be greater. So we lift up Bud. I'm also lifting up Kimberly Jackson Jones and her Kimberly Cares business and all of her clients and the upcoming clients. And we pray those same prayers that you have prepared people for such a time as this to be with the aging. I'm even hearing it's Psalm 71 that is the... Um, uh, so is it 71? Yeah, the prayer of an aged man. That we're lifting up this psalm for each and every one of those clients, God. We're praying for uh, Don as he's going through situations with updated Texas residency on licensing, both nursing and regular. God, we thank you for favor as he's going through the process. And also we're praying for anyone that's in need of restoration. Restoration of losses of any time, any type. Whether it was, you know, um, because of something you did or because life just happened. You know, you let your ID expire, so now you got to jump through hoops to get it renewed. That's a loss. Or whether you um, have, now have a, um, a, a, a record, a criminal record, whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony, and so now you're seeking employment, and that right there, that's considered a loss. But God is restoring, and he is there for us. I know many people with records that are gainfully employed for years that God has given them the power to get wealth, that he's given them favor with God and man. And so God, we thank you. So we're going into Psalm 25. That, those are the things that I had written down on my prayer list. And so as we're reading through this Psalm 25, you will hear the answers. And you know what? You didn't give me your prayer request, but you will see your prayer request, the answer to your request right here in Psalm 25. It's only 22 verses long. I'm going to read all of them and try and keep my, my exhorting to a minimum, but this is just how we do it. And we thank God that he has given us a portion of ministries where we can get an exhortation on the word of God. Psalm 95 says, let the high praises of God be in their throats as a two-edged sword. The high praises is not saying, hallelujah, thank you, God. Those are praises, and that is giving praise to God, and he recognizes the hallelujah. He inhabits the praises of his people. But the high praise that's referenced there in Psalm 95 is saying his word, that as we we release his word back to him it's like a two-edged sword as in Hebrews 4 12 the word of God is like a two-edged sword that cuts and divides and that is bringing in a healing the word of God is a weapon whereby we pull down strongholds and, 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 and high things, imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. How do you deal with those? With the weapon of the word. Jesus, when he was going through the temptation in Luke chapter 4, Satan came to him and he twisted up the word. And Jesus' response was, it is written. He knew what was right. And so God, we thank you for showing us the exhortation in your word that when we're faced with the situation, that we will not look at the situation, we will not amplify the 
the situation, but we will amplify your word, your word to be a banner over us. Jehovah Nisi, the God that, that watches over us, that victory is in Jesus, and Jesus is the word that was sent. You sent your word and healed the sick, and your word can deliver us out of anything that we're going through. Your word, your word, your word. All right, so the exhortation, that was part of it. Psalm 25, verse 1. Unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life. Who are you bringing your life to? Don't bring it back to your mama, your husband, or, or, or anything, anyone else. You bring your life back to God. Um, the, the King James says, do I lift up my soul? And so you lift up your soul to God. And you're asking him to examine you. Verse 2 says, oh my God, I trust, lean on, rely on, and am confident in you. Let me not be put to shame or my hope in you be disappointed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. You know, when that weapon formed against you, these, these losses, the, you, the enemy was like, I got them now. I got them now. They defeated. They already was feeling hopeless. Now they really going to feel hopeless. No, 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 no. Say this word right here. Let not my enemies triumph over me. It was a weapon that formed, but it will not prosper. Verse 3 says, Yes, let none who trust and wait hopefully and look for you be put to shame or disappointed. Who are you trusting in? Are you trusting in a paycheck? Are you trusting in your ability to make it do what it do? Or are you trusting in God? And guess what? Now is the time in the season where we're going to learn whether it's live or memorex. I'm going to say God is going to learn. He's testing and trying and proving us with the refiner's fire. And so you can have a form of godliness. You can even be like in Matthew when they said... They came to Jesus at the end and they said, did not we cast out demons in your name? And he said, get away from me. I never knew you. See, they had a form of religion and they understood religion. And guess what? The demons that were cast out of the people, the people were set free because the demons respond to the name of Jesus. But if you never get intimate with him for yourself, then he can tell you away from me. I never knew you. But that will not be your story because you're attached to a portion ministries and you are getting the word of God and you are learning how to open it up and having it opened up for you so that you will really know how to live what it is you're reading and guess what so that your hope and your trust will be in God not religion not a program not people not man if you trust the in the Proverbs it says don't trust in the arm of man we're trusting in the arm of God he said my arm ain't too short to save you and so okay it says let them be put ashamed who forsake the right or deal treacherously without cause show me your ways O lord teach me your paths so you may be going through something and you're like where is god in this all my children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. So how do you get to that place of peace? As I'm going through something and it's not right, keep your focus on him and allow him to show you his ways, even through the midst of trials, tribulations, persecutions. Verse five says, guide me in your truth and faithfulness and teach me for you are the God of my salvation for you. You only and all together do I wait expectantly all the day long. Let that be your meditation, that you learn to wait on God and have your expectation in him, not in stuff, places, people, things, religion, programs, anything else, but only in him. Verse 6 says, remember, O Lord, tender mercy and loving kindness, for they have been ever from of old. Remember not the sins, the lapses. <laughs> or frailties of my youth or or of my transgression when I when I missed it when I pressed past what I knew was right don't remember that stuff cover it with the blood and it says according to your mercy and steadfast love remember me for your goodness sake O Lord and see when you call for the mercy of God you're calling for the blood of Jesus to cover those sins and those transgressions whether of youth or of right now verse 8 says good and upright is the Lord therefore will he instruct sinners in his way see he will instruct you. He won't let you stay stuck on stupid. That's why you have Holy Spirit that's constantly convicting you that when you sin, you get this conviction, not condemnation. Condemnation makes you beat up, beat up on yourself and it makes you say, see, I can't never get it right. That's condemnation. Conviction says, now you know that wasn't right. Repent. Let's do this again. Change your way of thinking. That's what repent means. And so he's instructing sinners in his way. Some people say he don't talk to sinners. Yes, he do. It say it right there. He's instructing you because he wants you to do like Jesus said when he healed the people. Go and sin no more. He wants you to see that he's leading you and he's guiding you. Verse 9 says, he leads the humble in what is right and the humble he teaches his way. So maybe you don't understand his leading because you got a little too much pride. You're a little too cocky. You, you think you know it all. Humble yourself. 
under the mighty hand of God, resist the devil and he will flee. See, when you are humble unto God, under his hand, his hand hides you and the enemy cannot continue to, to torment you. So you got to line your life up with the word of God. And that's what we're doing today. Verse 10 says, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and steadfast love. You're saying, how did I get here? Number one, you got here by the choices that you made. God didn't desire for you to go down some of those roads that you went down. But guess what? According to Romans 8, 28, he can use all things together for the good. And so even if you took a wrong turn, he can fit it back in. And now the issues that you overcome on indication of the anointing you're designed to walk in. So you can walk and inform others don't go down there that ain't what you want but you know what if you're gonna be hard-headed and do it hurry up so you can get to the part of restoration because he will restore you preferably you don't get taken out while you're walking down the wrong path but he has mercy and steadfast love for you if you will just listen to him keep reading it says even truth and faithfulness are they for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies for your name's sake O lord Pardon my iniquity and my guilt, for they are great. Iniquity is something when people talk about generational curses, iniquity in the bloodline, it's the sins of the fathers, it's the things that, that our bloodline is, is just prone to give in to. But he says that he's going to pardon our iniquities. But look, you can't still stay there and, oh, this is my good little funny thing and I like it. It's not right. You got to repent. You got to change your thinking. You have the Holy Spirit to empower you, the word of God to instruct you. And the spirit of God to lead you, you must repent. And in repentance for his name's sake, does he pardon, uh, does he pardon your iniquities? Glory to God. Um, verse 12, who is the man who reverently fears and worships the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he should choose. He himself shall dwell at ease and his offspring shall inherit the land. See, I need my children to be free because you're going to inherit some land. But you know what? It says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. One moment, one moment, one moment. Okay, I found a way to do that. All right, all right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay, I have that. Let me keep going. I have somebody on the line live with me through my phone, and they got disconnected, and they called back in. And so we were at verse 11 about God pardoning our iniquity and our guilt. Plead the blood of Jesus, but mean it for real, though. Verse 12, who is the man who reverently fears and worships the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he should choose. Stop looking to everybody else and look to God. Sometimes that's why they can't answer. That's why I wasn't able to answer you when you called or, or something. Look to God. He, if you reverently fear and worship the Lord, he will teach you his ways and the ways you should choose. Verse 13, he himself shall dwell at ease and his offspring shall inherit the land. Verse 14, the secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord have they who fear, revere, and worship him, and he will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. See, if you don't get through all of them other verses and get down to verse 14, you never really get an understanding of the covenant. So you got to wash in the blood of Jesus. You must repent of your sins. You must change your thinking. Repent means to think about it differently and abhor the way you used to do it when, it, when you realize that you are displeasing to God and when you do all of that and then you come and you fear you revere and you worship him then he begins to reveal deep inner meanings unto you you begin to see things that you have quoted it for years but now it makes sense where you are right now verse 15 my eyes are ever toward the Lord for he will pluck my feet out of the net Lord Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Is that you? Is that the verse you need to stand on this week? Verse 16, where you're asking, and be gracious to me. Turn to me. I'm lonely and afflicted. I'm going to add, but many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. Verse 17, the troubles of my heart are multiplied. Bring me out of my distresses. Behold my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins of thinking and doing. Did you see the Amplified say that you got sins in your thought life? But we ask God to forgive us. There's some affliction. There's some pain. You think that because you say you ain't supposed to go through nothing. That's an injected lie of the devil. Jesus said in this world you're going to have tribulation but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And so we must learn to be Christ-like and tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Verse 19 says, Consider my enemies, for they abound. They hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep me, Lord, and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed or disappointed, for my trust and my refuge are in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for and expect you. We're supposed to have an expectation of God to manifest in our lives. And when he said, let integrity, that's something because uh, Psalm 26 is talking about vindicate me on behalf of my integrity. So guess what? If you have not been walking in integrity, this is the day for you to get in alignment and to walk in it. The last verse, verse 22 says, Redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. You can put your name right there. I am the chosen of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. So redeem Paulette, O God, out of all her troubles. Redeem Rakia. Redeem Joanne. Redeem Erica. Redeem whomever is listening to this call. Redeem Saran. Redeem my mama. Redeem us, O Lord, out of all our troubles as we keep our eyes on you. God, we thank you and we praise you. I pray prayers of healing right now. Anyone that is in need of healing, we lift up Stephen to you in this place of anointing, oh God, whereby you sent your word and healed the sick and also your word says that his health will spring forth mightily, swiftly, God. Thank you for a speedy recovery from the surgery a few weeks ago, God, and we thank you that his body heals. We thank you that his blood clots, God, and that his body is healing and no infection is forming, God. We thank you that even through this that you can regulate what's going on in his body that you can recreate the functions of the kidneys God and you can you can reverse the, the the functions of diabetes in his life and we know that you are the Lord God Jehovah Rapha that healeth thee we thank you that healing is also the dinner bell of the gospel and so we give you access to move in and to heal like never before I lift up my niece Malia to you God and I thank you for healing whatever the doctor's reports are you're greater than that we lift you up as the healer, that you are the divine healer, that you, your, our portion is wholeness in you, that you will heal like never before, that you will go to the depths of what is going on in her body and you will cause a healing to come forward. I lift up those that are desiring to lose weight. God, I speak right now to our body and our mind. Weight loss is, is 90% what go, 80% well, what goes on in your head and 20% exercise. So let us begin with the renewal of our mind with the purpose of food. Food is to refuel our body. Let us let us walk away from emotional eating or, or 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 eating without knowledge that God that you will send in with the with the invention of Facebook and, and internet, there are ways for us to learn how to properly fuel our bodies. And so, God, you will show us how to fuel our bodies, how to rest our bodies, how to rest our minds, because some of us are chemically imbalanced because we're not resting pop properly. And so we thank you, God. But then we don't want to get over into slothfulness and laziness, oh God. We want to be diligent about our Father's business, but we also want to take the time and power down and rest our dirt suits, just like we power down our phones a few times a week. We want to make sure that daily we are powering down and we are resting our mind and we're resting our physical body, God. And we do that for your glory, for you to get the glory and the honor and the praise. Speaking of glory, I lift up this volume four project, this book writing project, as well as the book writing conference that you have for me to host here in Houston, Texas on Sunday, June the 18th. And I thank you, God, for Godspeed, for insight, wisdom, knowledge. I thank you for all of the information that I leaned and received this weekend in Florida at the conference. But God, I thank you that it was just sharpening and confirming that which was in here, that you put it in there and you stir up and you heat it up this gumbo like never before, that it'll be a well-seasoned, well-simmered gumbo that will come forward for your glory, God, that you get the glory and the honor and the praise out of volume four, kingdom come, uh, kingdom ready, thy kingdom come, that you desire us to see, know, and understand what it means to be a dual citizen and have our citizenship in the heavenly realm and our citizenship here in the earthly realm. Help us in this time and in this season, in this latter part of 2017, to focus up higher, to focus in the heavenly, to think on these things, whatever is good, lovely, pure, noble, and of good report, to think on these things, to think in higher realms, to think in heavenly realms, so that we can truly give your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, where our original citizenship 
is. God, we thank you that you knew us before we were in our mother's womb. That was in the heavenly realm. And then we came through the womb and lived in sinful flesh and had to be born again. And we thank you, God, for salvation. And now we thank you for the transformation process and the sanctification process that we will walk in until we are absent from the body and present with you, oh God. And so we just thank you for what you're doing in this time and in this season. I stand humbled in your presence that you would choose me, your servant, for such a time as this. And I thank you for making my mouth as the pen of a ready writer that you would allow me to capture your heart, oh God, on paper to give and leave a legacy and a heritage to the next generation of my children and my children's children, natural and spiritual. I glorify you, magnify you, exalt you in Jesus' 